the NJCAA is falling behind on the leaders of the NCAA. And I call them the leaders because they're in front. The NJCAA gets uh, gets student athletes, and we transition them to the NCAA or NAIA, which are in front of the NJCAA. We are preparatory to taking uh, student athletes that need a little bit extra, whatever it might be, they need help with transitioning. And that's what we do. That's why I love my job. That's why I love the two-year experience because I have an opportunity to help so many people every year to give them opportunities. We want to give them opportunities. But right now, the NJCAA hopefully will get their act together and pay attention to what's going on across the country. So the, for the ones I don't know, and I'll show you the details of it, the, the NCAA already approved the fall sports for Division One. They get uh, they get eligibility given back, so the year doesn't count against them. So they can go play in spring season, which uh, majority can. They can play in spring season, win a national title, and not lose a year of eligibility, which makes sense because this whole year is jacked up because of COVID nineteen and the craziness that we uh, allowed it to be. And I say allowed it to be because that's what it is. It's out of control. Oh, no, no. The media didn't blow it up. The government's doing a great job. The government never does a good job. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Let's just talk about what's happening right now and what we can do to fix it uh, as soon as possible. So the NCAA eligibility extension for winter sport athletes. So they're already looking at the winter sports. They're looking into grandfathering them uh, uh, another season of, of eligibility like the fall sports. So in this article, it st states, the NCAA is weighing the possibilities of extending eligibility of all winter sport athletes by a season. Collegiate swimming and diving coaches were told on a phone call with trade group, the CSAA, last week. At this point, no decision has been made. Rather, it's a conversation that the NCAA is having given the disruption to the second season causing the ongoing uh, pandemic. So th that's... Uh, that's what's going on with that. They're already looking at the winter, the fall they dealt with. So let's let's read what they did for the fall um, real quick. So in the fall, and I'll read, as the NCAA Division I Board of Directors announced on Friday, and this is dating back August 22nd, uh, that it was working towards um, holding its fall championships in the spring. The organization also announced that they would stretch protections for student athletes even further. The protections come amid growing uncertainty for the fall season of the NCAA amid the ongoing uh, coronavirus pandemic. The NCAA Division I Council voted on Wednesday the move fall championships until spring. The Friday vote by the board of directors made that official. After the Division I Council recommended that the student-athletes from fall sports be given another year of eligibility regarding, regardless of whether or not they play in the 2020-21 season, the board of directors approved that those scholarships for those student-athletes who take advantage of should not count against term limits or team limits. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the NJCAA needs to do. Now, I, I've contacted the, um, the NCAA already asking the question, what if um, the two-year system, the NJCAA, plays games in the spring? And then I'm just talking soccer. So if they play, uh, our fall season was obviously canceled. It transitioned to the spring and got shrunk and were minimized completely. If it got moved, if they played games there, would they, if they transfer on to Division One, which majority of my athletes do, if they transfer to Division One, do they lose eligibility? Or are they under the same guidance of Division One? And this is what I got back from the NCAA. It says, and I won't say who sent it, but um, she responded, for JUCO and NAIA, it depends on if they grant the year back. The extension of the six-year clock is not applicable. For Division Two and Division Three, also goes back to how their language is written and if they also grant the COVID waiver. If they apply to extension of the six-year clock, that will be honored. So the what I got from that is, Depending on how, how the NJCAA words what we're doing could affect them on transition. So if we're not under the same wording as the NCAA Division One, those those student athletes 
are going to lose a year of eligibility. Not only lose a year of eligibility, it's going to be they're going to lose two years of eligibility within a six month time period. So they they don't even have an opportunity to even be seen. There's not there's not a t- it, it takes time to communicate with many universities to. Uh, showcase these players, put it on film, and, and you know, go on trips and all this stuff. And we have the summer, which is a dead period. I don't know if they'll reopen it up, but there's no recruiting trips in the summer. They're usually playing in, in the uh, USL two or or you know, in the the college circuit. It's th- we we are I- in a horrible situation right now. Horrible. Now, NCAA Division two and three. They're still working on different things. Division two, they had a uh, their rules were set up where they had to um, announce if they're going to play or not by a certain date to get their year back. But if they play, they might lose it. But there's still uh, ongoing discussions about that. But the NJCAA and NAIA write it up how the NCAA does, and then we're going to be okay from the reports I got thus far. But th- these are discussions that need to happen right now, have to happen right now because we need to protect that the two-year system from losing eligibility. That's what we have to do, and that's what we need to push hard. So any junior college coaches out there, contact me immediately. You can contact me at my uh, at Coach Cameron podcast at gmail.com or directly at my work at Phoenix College at david.cameron at phoenixcollege.edu. I'll put it in the uh, description below. But th- this needs to be taken care of. And the other thing is, oh, let me show you one more thing. The, um, this is our season. Now, for the ones that don't know, the NJCAA, for soccer, we play the shortest season in the world. The world. We Let's just compare it to the United States. We finish. If you win a national title, if, you, if you're lucky enough to get that far and you win a national title, you're done before Thanksgiving. That's shorter than every university, NCAA, even the Christian, whatever the national championship they have for that, NAI, all of it. We are the shortest. We're done before Thanksgiving. So you're looking at uh, our start date. Uh, we can start practice in August 1st, and we have games starting August 20th, and we'll be done in October. That's ridiculous. And then they limit what we do in the spring. Oh, you only can have four games. So let, let's look what they gave us for the because of COVID. So if I'm scrolling, to, here's the rules of the N, NJCAA. For soccer, where did I lose it? Oh, here it is. All right, fall practice, okay? This is what is kind of reverting things. It's like they're doing uh, – this would normally be kind of like spring. So in the fall, they gave us, which at, in Maricopa County, we're done till January 1 anyways, or January 4th. Uh, they permitted 60 consecutive calendar days for practice and scrimmages with, within August 15th through November 15th and allowed four scrimmage dates in a total for the year with a maximum of two scrimmages allowed in the spring. Each scrimmage limited to more, uh, no more than two outside opponents opponents okay so that's you know that that's what they gave us for the fall um but far as the uh the spring championships reading on that practice will be permitted beginning starting march 15th so we have a start date of march 15th uh competition will be permitted beginning april 2nd a maximum of 14 games that's all we get. All regular season region and district uh, competition competed by May 26, 2021. So uh, that's their season. It's so flipping short. Why even do it? Other than, I guess, win a national championship. But they, 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 they sh- shrink. I actually have a podcast. I'll link it uh, below in the, uh, in the description as well about my whole the, – the NJCAA playing the shortest season – uh, of all sports. It's the shortest. It's ridiculous how short it is. It needs to be expanded. It needs to be a fall spring, a true fall spring, because if we're around our student athletes more often, you have the ability to develop young men or women 
to become successful through the care of sport. That's that's why I do it. But they take they they give such a short window to really change lives, and then then you know then they're gone for eight months. It's just so flipping short. Our it's I don't know what. The concerns are, I, I just know, like, oh, we got to do soccer back in the day that, you know, they're like, oh, we got to do that commie sport soccer and, and uh, well, just shrink it in here and we'll just be done and then we'll focus on football, which I get. But now let's uh, realize, especially uh, what we do as coaches and mentors and, and, and managers, I mean, what we do is we change lives, especially at the two-year level. We save lives. And we want the opportunity to save lives by giving them opportunity, not taking taking it away. You, we should not be punished. These kids should not be punished for being at a two-year institution because that's all they could afford or they weren't given opportunity or a different circumstance arised. NJCAA, hopefully you'll listen to this podcast, and I'm going to tag you. You have to pay attention to what really matters. It's it's about student success, and we're not going to have success if we're going to eliminate two years of eligibility within six months. March through Halloween. That's what we got. Two years gone during that time frame. We need to change that. And this is Coach Cameron communicating to the world. Hopefully you heard my message, and I'm out. See you.